Hello, it's Bobby from Macaulay Bay. Have you ever wanted to cut something larger on your smaller laser, like puzzles or signs or whatever? Well, today, with the pass-through through my One Laser XRF and some tricks on Lightburn, we're gonna make that happen. This video is gonna be your new best friend. Stick around and see what I made. Hi, welcome. I'm Bobby from Macaulay Made. Today, I'm going to walk you through the entire process of using a pass-through on a hopefully larger laser. Like I said, I've got the One Laser XRF. That's what I'm going to be using today, but this should work on any laser with a pass-through and some tricks from Lightburn. So you can make larger pieces than your normal size bed. We're going to talk how to set up the alignment, what to do in Lightburn to make it all work and go together. It's going to be super simple, super informative. Stick around. Don't forget to like and subscribe right now if you want to see more of this kind of content. Let me know. Here we go. First part of this process, we're going to move over to Lightburn and set up our designs that we want to cut. I'm doing a little Christmas in July right now, so this is what we're going to work with. All right, this grid right here is the actual cutting size of my laser. We got a 12 by 24 grid. As you can see, I got three cuts here, and even a single one is bigger than my grid. But that's okay. This is what we're here to learn. So let me move these out of the way and get this all set up. I'm gonna actually did that backwards. Let me group this together. And this is gonna be my first piece I'm, oh, I'm gonna put on the board. I'm going to go back and actually the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a template of the board that I'm cutting. I'm using two foot by four foot MDF. So I'm going to set this up 24 inches by 48. And I'm going to set this up as a tool layer because I don't want to cut or score or engrave that box. This is just a template for me to realize how big my piece of wood is. So you see that? That's my cut out of my wood, or the shape of my wood. Now I'm gonna place all the designs in the shape of the wood as close as I can possibly get them because I don't, I wanna make as few cuts as I can on this. We may have to adjust once we get it in there, but it's not a big deal. All right. There is my pieces on my mock board. I'll have a leave, even a little left. Now I need to tell Lightburn where I want to cut. Cause again, this is one big piece. The end of my uh, cutting area is right there. It's not going to cut down here. So I need to make another square. Doesn't matter where I'm going to keep that as a tool line too. keep the same color. And I'm going to outline where I want cut. Did you see a little big there, a little short there, which is perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. I may get a little bit more in this one. There we go. All right, and then I'm going to copy Command C or Shift C, depends on what you're at. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make multiple copies. I'm just going to grab the corner. Snap it to there. I'm going to do that on down the line. Grab the corner, snap. Oop. Grab the corner. Snap. There we go. And one more time. Grab the corner. And snap. Easy peasy. I should have, yep, four cuts, four sections. That's good stuff. That's what I want. Now, I need something to tell Lightburn and my laser when I move to the next cutting section after this first section where to line up, where my next cut's going to line up. So we're going to make a simple little um, target, basically. You can do a dot. You can do, I like a target because it's easier for me to see. Hit Shift-0, make a perfect circle, and I'll use the pencil. Let me scoot in here. Use the pencil and literally just make a, a, a cross here. 
so I have a perfect little target. There we go. And again, I'm going to leave that as a tool line. No, actually, I, I forgot. I'm, I'm going to put that as an, an engrave or a score line, same as this, because I want to see that. Then we'll take it and put it on the board. In fact, I'm probably going to, I don't need it that big. Let me pull the size down. I'm going to put it somewhere down in this area, kind of off into the corner of my section. I like it right there. Then I'm going to copy, Command C, paste, and do the same thing, put it right there. I like it. Perfect. I guess I can go ahead and do those in all of the little spots. So I know where my corners are. They don't have to be perfect. It doesn't really matter where you put them, truthfully. Just as long as they're in there so you can line them up. And honestly, I use these a lot because I like to um, put them on all of my cuts because even if you're not doing this type of thing, if for some reason you have a miscut, uh, and something doesn't cut all the way through, or something that doesn't engrave right, you could always put it back in, and you don't realize it until you pull it out of the bed, of course. You can always put it back in, line these dots up, and it'll go right back to it. So, now that I've got that done, I've got, make sure I've got this group. Yeah. So, I'm going to click on that, and then Command, and click on your outside line. At that point in time, you go to Tools, Cut Shapes, and it will split it. Now, you have a shape here and a shape there. We're going to go on down the line and do the same thing. There's that one. See, now you've got this one. It's all sectioned off and ready to go. Perfect. And then we're just going to keep doing that. There you go. And one thing, I don't know if you saw me do that. One thing you need to do, and it drove me crazy for a long time, make sure you click the inside piece first and then click the border. If you do it backwards, then your, your tools slash cut shapes will not show up. So now we're ready to go cut. First thing we're gonna do to get the one laser ready to do the pass through cutting is simply open this door. This bottom section is not a part of the original uh, laser by this laser portion from here to here is the actual laser portion and then this riser the second portion is an add-on you buy afterwards to do things like this they also have a conveyor I'm not sure if it's out yet but it's soon to be out that you can set up and it'll do this process for you but if you don't have this or you made your own or you don't want to put the money out for the conveyor this is a way to do that first thing we do is got to open this door simple push button I keep this little magnet there to help pull it and that's it uh, you'll do the same thing on the back side. You'll unbuckle it and push it through or pull it through or whatever you've got to do. To, but you unmagnetize it, it'll come right through. Also, make sure your, your crumb tray, if you will, uh, is on the top shelf because that'll be what we use to hold the piece of wood on. Now, let's go inside of it and figure out how to set that up. Next thing we're going to do is, first of all, make sure that the laser head is out of the way. We don't want to bump it. We don't want to hit it. Whatever way is best for you is best for it, but we don't want to hit it because we're going to be taking this honeycomb tray out. And that's a simple process. Just grab a hold of these and pull it out and set it aside. Pretty simple. Again, you see your crumb tray right here. There is one level up that usually this is where it's at, but we're going to pull it down and set it one more down. And we're good to go. I need to clean this from the last one, but that's okay. You, you'll forget that. Now, we just get our wood and set it up in Lightburn. Let's go over there. All right, Amazon Prime special here. This little sit and stand desk. It's super cheap. Then I can lift it and, and pull it up and down as I need. Let's just keep the, the wood even on here. 
which is nice. And again, you can adjust it to wherever you want, wherever you need. Until I get the conveyor, this is an easy way to do it. I've also done it with on saw horses with boxes. However you can do it just to keep the wood level, make it easy enough. Looks good to me. Let's get to cutting. Okay, we got our first cut in. It did some strange things, but it's all good. I'm going to paint over this anyway. So, we scoot it up into the, the unit. We've, this is our first cut, so I'm going to scoot it up inside there. Now we have to align our laser head with these crosshairs. And the first one is much easier to do than any of them. So I'll make sure I am good and my focus is in. And I'm going to jog that over. And on this one, that's the good thing about this first one is you kind of got to set it down. So I'm going to pull my, that's about as far as my head wants to go up. So I'm going to pull it down just a little bit and then we'll reset it. And then I pull it down and put the laser right in that crosshair. There we go. Once we get our first cut complete, then I'm going to go in and take this entire board and scooch it up to my next cut line. I want to keep my little targets in space so I know where to start cutting and where to finish cutting. Now, after you line up your first target, you go into Laser Tools, Print and Cut, Laser Tools, Print and Cut, and then Start Wizard. Then it'll ask you to press set your first target position. You'll click on that first target position, click set, and then it'll mark that first position. Now I'm going to pull the laser over. This side is not as easy again because I've got to use the toggle switch to get it lined up. It's not like the first board. Sometimes this takes a little bit. So that's it. Right dead center. I know you can't see it, but it's dead center. Trust me. Now once we have that set, we click on that one. And then we want to set that second target. We want to hit scaled. And now we're ready to go. Number two, everything looks good. Now we're just going to do the same thing, rinse and repeat. So there you have it. Cutting these giant pieces on a smaller laser is very doable. A little prep, a little patience, maybe some cuss words too. These are not that bad. It takes a little more time. Hopefully I can get the conveyor for the one laser soon. One laser? Talk to me. Anyway, so we can get that done and that'll make this process a lot easier. But if you don't have that or don't even have that option on your, the particular laser you're using, this is a very much an option. Also, if you're looking for a new laser that you can do this on, down below you can click on my affiliate link for the one laser that I'm using. Please click it if you're looking. Helps us out. And if you want more tips like this, we got a lot more craziness coming along. So don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and hopefully we'll see you soon for more big builds on Macaulay Made.